Hey everybody, this is Eric Meek from um, web.mac.com forward slash Final Cut Studio School and um, I'm here to show you how to do a reflection in motion. I've done, showed you how to do it in Final Cut Pro and all that good stuff and I'm just going to show you how to do it in motion because motion gives such a better result and such a more realistic reflection that um, I'm going to show you how to do it. Also, I was emailed about how to do it in motion also. So here we go. I've got a clip in my canvas here. Uh, it's just an HD clip that I use a lot for a lot of my tutorials because it's a really beautiful clip and it just it just demonstrates a lot of effects really nicely. I'm going to open my project by going up here to the top and opening my project pane by hitting the project button. Currently using 2 gigs of RAM of my 14. I want to keep track of that. Now, what first thing we want to do is we want to select our video or picture in the in the project layers tab and hit the K key. And what this will do is this will clone the layer, not duplicate it. There's a difference. Duplicate it by hitting command D and that will duplicate it. Now, if you hit the K key, it will clone it. And the difference is a clone will update along with the other clip. If you change the original clip's opacity, the clone's opacity will change as it does. But a duplicated clip will not. And also, a cloned clip does not use near as much RAM as a duplicated clip. So you can keep that in mind. So select your clip and hit K to clone it. And as you can see, a clone layer, it'll tell you it's a cloned layer. And it's got this little emblem here. So now that we have that, we want to flip it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our Properties tab of our cloned layer, into the Properties tab, right here. We're going to go down to Scale, the Y position. Now, click the Y position and leave the number the same, just make it a negative. So I'm going to make it negative 45. Boop! And that will flop the image completely over. Like that right there. You can't tell it because it's not playing but I will show you here really soon make sure all your levels your movie start at the beginning of your project so now when I select my clone layer and drag it down you can see it's a complete duplicate or flop of the original As you can see the BBC motion and stuff, it's a complete flop. That's what that's what turning the negative scale number did. Instead of having to take your 3D transform tools, which you can do, you can go in and get your 3D transform tools right here and flip it this way like this. But it's much easier just to uh, do it the way that I showed you. So now I'm going to line up my clip like this right here to where there's a small gap between the two clips like that a small little gap now what I want to do is I want to select my group make sure your group is selected select your shape right here and when I draw a shape I'm going to draw it around the whole bottom clip and a little bit of the top clip like so. There. Now we have us a little shape. Now we're going to go to our shapes tab in the inspector. Make sure feel is checked and outline isn't. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add an image mask to our cloned layer now. So select your cloned layer. Go up to the object menu and select add image mask now what you want to do is in your HUD with your image mask selected drag the rectangle down into your HUD like that right there and you'll see it throws it in as a reflection but it don't really look like a reflection because it's using our source channel the alpha channel is our source channel we don't want the alpha channel uses our source channel we want to click this in the HUD and change it to luminance 
Now when we go back in and select our rectangle, select style under the shapes tab, under the color fill mode, we're going to select gradient. And from the pop-up menu, we're going to select grayscale. Now, what we want to do is, you can see it's starting to come into play here. It's starting to fade out a little bit. Now what we want to do is, right click and select edit gradient. And it'll bring this little tool up. And you can select these little tools and adjust your gradient. So I want to drag it down like, back like this. See, as you can see, it kind of makes our reflection a little more less obtrusive, I guess you would say. Now that we have that done, I'm going to select my group and I'm going to reposition both of them. I want to select my 3D transform tools. I'm going to grab, grab the left one here and I'm going to tilt it to the right to give it a little dimension. Like that. And there we go. A pretty dang good looking reflection. And when I play it, So, let's see here, drag this out, and we'll drag this out, so it'll last, you know, we want it to last, and as you can see, it looks like a pretty daggone good reflection, it's a lot better quality reflection than you get in Final Cut, look at that, that's beautiful, it really is. I mean, of course, it needs tweaked here and there because I've done this so fast, but it's a good reflection. And if you're trying to do effects like this and you're not in a hurry, use Motion and then import it back into your project in Final Cut Pro. Only do this kind of stuff in Final Cut if you're in a hurry and you ain't got time to do this. Because Motion, as you can see, gives such a better, better quality result. You can put you some text and titles out to the right here if you wanted to. It's just a really nice way to do things. It's really elegant. It's popular nowadays, especially with the Apple crowd and on their website. So I hope you've learned something. This is Eric Meek signing off, and we'll see you next time.